Hi everyone, thanks for attending the NMC's Meet Our Members webinar. We're really excited to have CoreTech with us today and for you to meet them. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to type them into the questions panel on the right in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. Pat, would you like to introduce your team to us? Yes, thank you, Shell. Thanks for hosting us today. I'm Pat Meskel, um, Business Development Manager for CoreTech. I'm here with Ted Lund, he's our technical director. And joining us from Hopkinton, Massachusetts is Scott Paul, CoreTech president, and Liz McQuaid, who is our contracts manager. So we're happy to be here today. And Scott, do you want to start off? Sure. So CoreTech provides and is in the corrosion engineering services business. That encompasses a gamut of technical services across a wide range of industries. So in general, we call it and consider it corrosion engineering, corrosion engineering services. So that involves a number of things. Uh, principal to our work is cathodic protection, design, designing systems, installing systems, uh, we test, troubleshoot, evaluate, maintain these styles of corrosion control systems, whether they're impressed current cathodic protection or sacrificial manner. And they are for marine structures, salt water, fresh water, inside of water storage tanks and piping and tank ne networks that are underground. Tank inspection. So these are regulated by a number of agencies, the American Water Works, uh, the Fire National Fire Protection, API. So these can be large tanks, multi-million gallon tanks, uh, 300,000 gallon water storage tanks, and et cetera. So we evaluate those with a number of approaches, direct assessment, swimming ROVs, and other to gain knowledge of the inter internal condition and the structural integrity and regulatory uh, compliance on those storage tanks. Infrastructure condition assessment. So a good example of that is this photograph of where these uh, pipes, these are pipes about 300 feet long each underneath a dam. And these pipes were built in about 1920. The riveted steel, internally lined exterior coated water pipes, four foot diameter. So we, you'll find this exact kind of pipe buried. We see this a lot in the water industry, for example, transmission mains. And we evaluate the condition of them and use statistics to predict pitting, internal pitting for this pipe actually, uh, wall thickness loss and et cetera. So that's infrastructure condition assessment. How long, how good is it today and how long will it last? And what's most important is what can be done to maintain and run this piping network or system for longer periods of time. And then maintenance expertise on long-term infrastructure preservation projects or water storage tanks. We have, we have several tanks under contract now for a 15 year term to maintain the tank, satisfy the regulations on those tanks, and evaluate those and document their conditions and take care of those. And then that's the long-term infrastructure preservation approach is what we do. We provide the engineering uh, and support to do that. Thanks, Scott. Uh, yeah, as Scott said, you know, a, a lot of our core expertise as we'll talk about today revolves around the preservation and analysis of infrastructure. And we'll show a lot of examples of infrastructure. It can be anything from, as you said, pipes and tanks, offshore structures to complete uh, process facilities and power plants. So it's really uh, uh, the use of a, a core understanding of corrosion and corrosion mitigation uh, that we provide to our customers across the country. Just, Scott, if you want to just start in on our on our core tech history, give them a little background of how how you got started and where we are. Yeah, so when Ted and I were a bit younger, um, and that's that's pictures of us. I'm actually inside of a transmission main evaluating the pitting, internal pitting, 
activity on a, a water pipe, water transmission main. So we've been in business uh, for now 20, 23, 24 years, and currently have offices in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maryland, and New York and approximately 32 employees at this time. We do function and work throughout the United States from as far away as Alaska to Texas to Florida. And we have a number of staff with more than 35 years of experience and then quite a few junior guys well credentialed. We have every, it's now AMP uh, or NACE credential individuals in both coatings and the corrosion engineering or cathodic protection side of that agency. Yeah, as, as Scott said, we uh, we work as a uh, high tech and, and deeply knowledgeable corrosion company. We're not the biggest in terms of numbers of people, but uh, as we'll show, we have a very dedicated uh, clientele and we do work uh, routinely in the North Slope of Alaska into the West Coast, uh, we've had projects overseas. And, and a lot of that from what we'll show you is because of unique skills and unique technologies that we've developed for assessment of infrastructure um, that allow us to gather data in a much more safe and streamlined way. So it's, um, uh, we, we continue to grow, but right now we're, we cover a big territory with our 30, 32 people that we have. You know, the picture that you have in the lower right hand corner um, is actually taken on the North Slope of Alaska. We were doing tank work for Conoco, which we do almost every year. And we'll have a crew going back to Alaska this year to apply cathodic protection and uh, analyze their tanks once again with robotics. So uh, anywhere that confined space entry is a, an issue, a cost, a concern, uh, we're able to bring a lot of our technology there and then use our, our basic corrosion knowledge to solve their problems. <clears throat> so I'm right. going to talk a little bit about Cortex Future. All right, thanks, Ted. Uh, so I'm Liz McQuaid. I'm going to be covering some of our current events and our, our plans for the future. Um, so we currently have a WBE VBE application in with the SDO in Massachusetts. We're also working on a WOSB application with the SBA and a GSA um, contract with the federal government. And uh, so I am Elizabeth McQuaid, I'm the contracts manager here. So I ensure compliance with our wide variety of project scopes and work environments from um, municipalities, federal governments, um, private uh, sites that we work on. Um, and I am a prior U.S. Navy Lieutenant, and I worked for the Naval Facilities Engineering Command, NAFAC, as a warranted construction manager. And uh, my last tour was with Walter Reed at the uh, Bethesda Walter Reed National Medical Memorial Center. Um, and let's see, so our last bit of current news, which has been very exciting for us, is our new office location is in New London, and so this is an 18,000 square foot location strategically located to support the south, southeastern Connecticut region. Um, and so we're, we're excited to have a large presence in that area and um, adjacent to the Groton Subbase, the Connecticut State Fear Projects, General Dynamics and Electric Boat. So those are some of our current, current events and future plans here at Cortec. Thanks, Liz. Um, you know, Cortex has been growing and, and adding key people uh, it's been something that's really enhanced our growth and made us, uh, given us the ability to take on much more sophisticated customers and products. With Liz's help, we're going to make that transition even better going forward from the standpoint of uh, being involved and, and being able to offer services to our customers that, are, uh, that meet their, uh, their requirements from a contractual standpoint. So I'll let Scott start talking a little bit about you know the the two two of us in terms of our leadership and background within the company. 
So Ted and I have known each other for approximately 38 years at this point, and we have worked prior to meeting each other, we worked in other places um, at that point. So I have focused most of my work on the electrical side, the electronic side of corrosion. Corrosion is a DC electrical circuit. It involves ions and electrons. And we control corrosion with ions and electrons, without protection. So that's been my expertise and just a general corrosion engineering evaluation of condition and failure analysis and have many credentials, seven PEs, I'm a NACE corrosion specialist. And Ted is a level three coding inspector, number 50. So he's been certified as a level three for quite some time. He's principally engaged in the tank inspection, API certification, tanks relative to fuels, water, et cetera, and has, has been in this business for about as, we've been in the business about as long as each other. And we're currently here together at Cortec and have been for now about 10 years. And so under us as technical directors, we, we, over, we oversee, we support, we develop uh, concepts and, uh, and procedures and review reports and write, write technical reports, proposals to support the, uh, the staff here at Cortec. So we, we like to call ourselves corrosioneers, as you see on the left here, uh, and our process is called corrosioneering. Um, it's a little fun word that we've developed. Um, Scott's background, and I think that's what, what you get when you get Cortec reason we talk about our history is that our background is what drives our knowledge to help future customers. So Scott comes from uh, a background uh, in ocean engineering at URI and then went on to work for years at New England Power. So he comes from a power delivery and power de generation background and corrosion. Uh, my varied degree, uh, our background started in the oil industry, drilling oil wells and then moved on to the corrosion uh, mitigation through coatings. So as Scott said, I handle a lot of the physical nature of corrosion, if you will, uh, assessment of steel and concrete structures, protection of those structures with protective coatings. And we try to ensure that the money spent on coatings is in fact, uh, provides a 20 to 25 year lifespan. So our customers get value out of their investments. So, the backgrounds that we bring um, provide our employees and our customers with a, a wide range of knowledge. And then as we add staff to our, our company, we try to gain the same kind of background diversity of people so that we can be solution providers to our customers, not just um, corrosion monitors. We actually want to find and apply solutions for them. So that give you a little bit of background on the, on the two oldest guys here anyway. Now we'll talk a bit about uh, credentials. So within Cortec, there are a lot of different technology, a lot of technical people, engineers, technicians, which have been certified, trained and certified and have obtained these certifications from Lewis NACE which is now merged with the uh, Steel Structures Painting Council. So it's a different organization uh, by name, but it is one organization that addresses coatings and corrosion engineering across every industry and type. Uh, so we have all these certified people here at Cortec, a number of PEs, uh, engineers, NACE, API 653, tank inspectors, non-destructive testing capabilities, um, FRP as fiberglass reinforced plastic tank structures. And that, that's all applicable to various structures like the Marine Tower that's to the left and the solar focusing mirror array that's generating steam in a power plant on the right. It, that's one of those interesting projects. Uh, we put that picture in there because it, it, it was actually a very cool location. 
So this is a uh, solar collector in Southern California. Uh, and it's in a good example of Cortec being brought into some, be, do something that is basic to that operation that can't fail, but it's not the solar panel and it's not the collector. It's the water storage tanks that they need to generate their steam to actually generate the power. So we got called in because of our robotic capability to inspect all the tanks at this facility. Uh, it's a, a private facility uh, that's owned and they generate power for the, for the state of California. So we, we once again, we use our core expertise on something that's new and innovative in the industry uh, that has, no matter what you do, you're going to have some kind of a corrosion issue, uh, regardless of how high tech the location might be. So now maybe we can talk a bit more about our, our kind of our specific services and the kind of industries and, and applications we have. So a principle to that is a variety of structures. So we see a, a fuel unloading dock there on the on the right hand side, where we designed and installed a, an improved and updated impressed current cathodic protection system on that salt water environment for those piles and support structures on that. Uh, so that's a that's a totally managed project by Cortec. We had some consulting divers and electrical uh, electrician services to support that work. On the top right is an ROV. So this is a swimming ROV or swimming drone. So we fly drones and we swim drones that are used as our eyes underwater or in the air to inspect at close range, evaluate coatings, look at corrosion issues, inspect things, in some cases pick stuff up. Uh, storage tanks of potable water are not supposed to have other things in them that are supportive of bacteria or trash or things like that. So they need to be set, sealed up in sanitary inspection uh, criteria and mandates. The bottom right is a probably a 48-inch coated steel water main in, in Manhattan. So we do all the design work for the man for the boroughs in New York, without a protection design, we do installation inspection and all the testing associated with those systems. Tank management program and everything to do with coatings, specification, failure analysis, and, um, and other. So that's a broad brush of the, the things that we work on. Yeah, the, um, the just a small note on the robotics uh, we were the primary pioneering firm in the United States that uh, brought to the industry robotic inspection and cleaning, sediment removal of drinking water storage tanks. Uh, we still probably the largest provider of those services in the United States to municipal and private drinking water. So we use a lot of technology, as we were saying before, to enhance what we can do for our customers collect data in a, in a better, safer, more efficient way, and then apply our corrosion knowledge to, to, to address what we find. Um, coatings inspection is a big part of what I do and our people do on the in the field. And uh, that can be any kind of a coating application to concrete or steel, where we're assuring that the product is applied properly. And then uh, once again, the client gets the uh, investment return that they, that they paid for. So it's um it's a big list of services. It covers a wide industry, and uh, it all revolves around that same core knowledge and expertise of corrosion and corrosion design, trying to design it out. So I'll go to the next screen. This is a important one that uh, we'll all kind of contribute to, but I think it it really shows uh, as a small company what's meaningful to us in terms of client relationships. So we can talk about, so Scott, maybe you can talk about some of the big power guys that are on here, and I'll talk about some of the water people. So for, for a, a firm like Cortec, who's highly um, credentialed in a very niche market, our clientele is quite diverse. So Exelon Corporation, for example, maintains and operates 12 nuclear power plants, and we work at about half of them at this time on their buried infrastructure. 
So we're in the nuclear business, New York City DDC. We've been doing their design work for about 14 years now. Energy, water, all the, all the water utilities, large and small, we work with relative to coatings, inspections, tanks, and such like that. We're currently working on, so the reason we're in this, this group here is that we're in Connecticut and we're supporting various projects in, in the um, Connecticut River area, which includes what's going on at the Groton Subbase, we're uh, supporting the cadets at the um, Naval Academy or at the Coast Guard facility, Coast Guard Academy, and involved in supporting these things and, and working locally with local business people and developing these relationships. We also work with a wide range of engineering firms on design projects, inspection projects, and maintain these relationships and have been for, for a long time. Uh, so that's how we that's how we operate and it's important for us to build these relationships and continue to provide the services um, the quality services that we do yes yeah, as, as scott said we've we've been in business for 24 25 years and you look at this list of customers um, many of them have been customers since day one and continue to come to us as a sole source or a single source for their corrosion needs um, but a, a good important point that Scott started to make there is that our network of, of people and companies encompasses other folks, not just the owners. So we're doing work in collaboration with material fabricators, uh, contractors, uh, vendors of a specialized equipment um, and, and design engineering firms. So we may not always be the lead, we may be a critical component of a team and we're more than happy to play our part as a team on some of these larger projects that we'll talk about. Um, Department of Energy has been, a, has been a very interesting client for us and we're now uh, under a five-year contract to handle facilities in Nevada for the Department of Energy. So it's, uh, it's kind of uh, interesting for such a small company to, to have these kinds of customers and customers like this for so long, but it, uh, it really makes a life interesting and, and I think it actually helps us recruit new people when they get a chance to see the kinds of projects they're going to work on. Part of the uh, Department of Energy um, issues is that uh, we provide our inspection services, but um, what is important to those uh, sites where we go is that we provide them at a higher level of safety and security. We're able to pass the high bar that they set um, are for, for the for contractors who come onto their sites. We, we've been working for oh, 10 years at Los Alamos, uh, Sandia National Labs, and um, the Nevada test site we have a, a five-year contract for. And, and the basic reason why they come to us is we do provide these services, but we also provide them at a higher level of, of safety and security. So um, we maintain those relationships because of those services that we can provide. Yeah, that's right, Pat. And I and actually Liz is Liz has helped us move up the um more sophisticated and more responsive to that. So Liz deals with all of our health and safety plans and vetting of the more um involved in detail plans we have to submit for these uh uh secure locations and certainly her NAFAC experience helps a great deal there. So now maybe we'll we'll talk a bit about uh, kind of specifically, as Scott said, why we're one of the one of the driving reasons we became parts of the Naval Consortium was an interest in the marine environment around us, and specifically the, the very top prospect of being involved in the offshore wind industry. Uh, we see that as a, a really it's core to our business. Uh, they're doing us a favor by putting steel structures in salt water. They want them to last for 30 years. So everything that Cortec knows how to do can be applied to this particular industry. So Scott can talk a bit about uh, sheet piles and, and work we've done there, and then uh, we'll transition into how that might apply to this uh, this new and growing business. So saltwater is 
internally very corrosive. Everybody sees that. Anybody around it knows that it's corrosive, and it's it's aggressive and corrosive corrosive by orders of magnitude over things like soil and fresh water. So it takes more um, approach to take care of these things. And if you don't, if they're not taken care of, their lifespan is considerably reduced. So just meeting a 20 year design life, the infrastructure costs a lot of money to put there. And most people that I come across are interested in how do I continue to operate? We need this to continue to function and do what's necessary. And so rehabilitation, upgrading, repairs, recodings uh, become uh, things that we get involved in. So let's go ahead because we're probably running out of time. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the center picture is just the uh, a tower similar to offshore wind. That actually is the Buzzard Bay Light Tower. We were involved in uh, protective coatings inspection on that. And then Scott, Scott, this is a, a if you could spend a few minutes just on uh, the use of our advanced technology for the uh, smart stacks. So to address the needs of, of uh, proof, uh, criteria, demonstration, and evaluation of cathodic protection at nuclear power plants in their unique uh, settings. We've developed, uh, we call it a smart stack, which is a corrosion rate monitoring device. It's used to evaluate criteria for cathodic protection in means and ways that can't be done without devices like this. So we've been behind these. We have uh, uh, over a hundred of these out in various nuclear power plants, just installed 18 of them last week and could be utilized in remote monitoring. And so the windmills that are being, uh, will be sent out from New London are of interest in that this may provide some pretty good feedback uh, that can be monitored remotely as to the condition and corrosion control systems in place to make sure that's not a problem moving forward. It's challenging enough to operate a windmill 20 miles offshore um, corrosion is one of those things that's not going to rest, it's not going to sleep. So, yeah, the, the device that uh, Cortec developed, particularly Scott and the folks at Hopkinton, actually is, is critical to uh, license renewal and life lifespan expansion of nuclear power plants. So this was a critical piece of data that they had to have in order to get their licenses extended. So it was a, a good application for our knowledge, and we were able to compare it up with technology to give us a remote sensing capability. And as Scott says, you take anything like an offshore windmill that you're trying to monitor everything remotely instead of sending people out there, we believe we've got some good skills that will apply to that. So I'll move from that to the short support facilities where we've already started to make some inroads on, on uh, assisting people and expanding these uh, port facilities. These are mostly bid projects and um, these projects are, um, what we what Cortec does is uh, try to build relationships with the general marine general contractors that are performing the work here. All of these uh, projects have cathodic protection components and uh, uh, coatings components that, you know, our ex expertise uh, is critical for. So um, we dog these projects and um, submit proposals on, on our work to the general contractors that are bidding that. Um, and we are working on, under Weeks um, Construction, uh, Weeks Marine for the Navy Pier, Pier 32. and uh, we are currently in discussions with several of the uh, contractors for the Connecticut State Pier to provide our services there as well. Um, we've worked at the New Bedford Pier and, and Providence. Uh, so this is part of um, what we do. Uh, the Nautilus uh, Pier in Groton, we just were awarded the contract for uh, cathodic protection for the pier there. So um, 
This is the type of work that we are looking for. This, uh, as I said, is all bid work, so it's a matter of uh, pricing our work uh, uh, competitively and, and give, making a presence to the general contractors who are, who are bidding the work. And on that, that Nautilus project, will be the design firm developing the design for that, that cathodic protection system as well as um, buying all of the materials for installation. And, and it's, it's interesting that, uh, that we've got a bullet there of naval vessel preservation. Uh, Cortex also involved in another uh, marine, naval marine museum in Buffalo for the Sullivans and the Croker, which people might be familiar with that used to be housed in uh, the Connecticut, in the Thames River. So we're going to be doing uh, corrosion protection for these historic vessels to preserve them for future generations up there in Buffalo. So it's uh, it's one of those projects that we all like to be involved with uh, because it has some significance. But once again, it's it's part of our our core business in terms of preserving steel structures in salt water, or in this case, fresh water. So we hope to really be able to leverage what we're already doing on the shore side for the support of the offshore wind industry, uh, develop relationships with the people that are going to be the service providers, engineers, and designers for these structures. And we see that as a real opportunity for core tech for the next 20 to 50 years. Uh, so that's, um, that's like a pretty good uh, uh, place to jump off here. And we'll go to our last slide. So that you have some information uh, on how to get a hold of us. Um, as I said, uh, everybody that's on the, the presentation today is listed here with our phone numbers and emails. Uh, we really want to, uh, we, we bring up the word corrosioneering again, because that's what we do. That's who we are. Uh, we really want to emphasize for those that are listening uh, that are not owners, that Cortec is eagerly um, interested in net networking with vendors, general contractors, uh, specialty suppliers, uh, we can find a way to help you. And there are lots of instances where we drop on your expertise to, to make our projects work. So we hope that people listening in uh, get the feeling that Cortex is a team member and a partner in, in anything that we can do from, from a corrosion engineering and protection standpoint. So I would guess that at this point, if there's any questions, we'd be happy to field any questions folks might have. Wonderful. You guys have done um, such a great job in sharing that a few of the questions that came in, you actually answered as the presentation was moving on. Um, so that was pretty cool to see. And if anyone does have some more questions, please send them in, but we'll get started with the couple that weren't answered yet. Has Cortec worked on offshore steel structures? So I think you addressed this, but just for clarification. The, um, the structure that one of the structures that we showed uh, was the Buzzards Bay Lighthouse, which is essentially a steel, tubular steel structure anchored into the seafloor uh, with uh, cathodic protection to protect the submerged surfaces. And of course, your, your aggressive splash zone and above water surfaces that are all steel. A uh, structure that the uh, the designers one wanted to make last for 40 or 50 years. So we've been involved with maintenance inspection and then maintenance coatings inspection to make sure that that structure is pr preserved. Uh, we've had some applications where new structures are being fabricated on shore. They're going to go out into the marine environment. And we've provided that same level of, of quality control and inspection to make sure that once it gets there, it's going to last as long as possible with as little maintenance as possible. Uh, and Scott can talk a bit about um, some of the uh, the near shore uh, equipment that he showed some pictures of before. I think. Yeah, we've worked on a lot of a lot of sheet pile, pipe pile structures that are being used to extend land. Uh, preserve and maintain hazardous material from the land from going into the water. That's what's going on in, in uh, Kearney, New Jersey. So we have worked on uh, miles and miles of sheet pile wall and pipe pile wall and, 
and currently close to home working at the Navy facility in Groton on Pier 32 that's being built to support the new submarine class uh, submarine that's coming in and they had to build a bigger pier. So there's testable anodes and some unique unique approaches to controlling corrosion on those three foot diameter piles, 125 of them for 50 years. So we've seen an awful lot. We've done a lot in that space. Thank you. I'm not the owner of my company. How would I know whether it would be good to have you talk with my owner? For example, what, how would I know if we were your ideal type of customer or what types of customers do you work with? Oh. As not the owner, yeah. So, so corrosion is one of the things that pretty much occurs at most facilities now. Um, and it's dependent on a, a, a bunch of variables. So sometimes it's not visible. So if take a fire water system, for example, that's full of water, or even a, a reactive, preactive type of system that is supposed to be dry, these corrode and leak. And we've evaluated these quite extensively uh, because it's out of sight and out of mind until it leaks on the computer system or inside the, the clean room because that's what a fire water suppression system is. Uh, leaks and drips in libraries and clean rooms are costly. And so this little corrosion problem has now become and manifested to become something bigger than it needs to be. So I think that in the interest of maintaining any facility or structure, there's always, always a possibility that corrosion will cause unwanted damage in your facility. Yeah, I think uh, we ran into some consequential, very consequential damages to, as Scott was describing, a, uh, a major hedge fund facility it was making not a, what they do per minute, but it's uh, more than I make per year. And they had uh, their fire water system corrode through and leak onto their computer systems. And they had to shut down their hedge fund trading operation in order to deal with something that nobody in the facilities had thought about. And I guess that's the maybe the answer to your question, Shell, is that anything you have in your facility while you're doing your business, whether it's a hospital or a university, you have to do those things that make that they're your core business. Well, all your core business depends on everything around you working. So anything that can corrode in your power plant, your heating and distribution system, your firefighting system, uh, those kinds of things have to be uh, addressed and that's what we do so we can pretty much find a problem uh, that needs to be addressed uh, in any facility okay and if there's a follow-up to that question go ahead and, and type it in um, thank you Ted for clarifying that if steel structures are painted or coated would you even need cathodic protection well I'll let Electrochemical guy answer that question. I think coatings are the best thing in the world, but uh, <laughs> we always like to put our technologies together. So, so those two technologies are a belt and suspender approach. And the federal government, the Department of Transportation, requires high quality coatings and cathodic protection on buried pipelines. So, a 1500 psi natural gas pipe that is 900 miles long and there's a bunch of them in this country are required to have those two technologies to make sure they don't develop external holes and leak natural gas so that's how that works and that's that's applicable that whole approach is applicable to everything else that we coat and submerge the two go hand in hand uh, that's how it works it really it really comes down to a uh, risk reward if you will or, or or that risk chart so if you have a structure that if it fails is a huge problem because it leaks a corrosive liquid or it leaks a hazardous material or it falls down and now you have as i said before some consequential problem uh you want the best you want the most corrosion protection most corrosion protection you can buy is going to be a combination of without a protection and coatings and they they support each other and make themselves make themselves better in terms of long-term performance. I mean, if I'm painting my 
wrought iron handrail at my home and it rusts, there's very little consequential damage I'm gonna incur. So that's that's where our, our full range of skills really pay off, is when you talk about something that you want to last 50 years, or if it fails as a major, major impact on the operation. Um, one thing that I was, Scott was talking about in New York City, and something that's come up that I'd never seen before is, we're actually being asked to design corrosion protection for 100 year life expectancy at wastewater treatment plants now. So the United States as a as a engineering community is in fact starting to look at designing for much longer life than they used to and corrosion engineering has become a, a big a key component of that. And and to that point the uh, bill that's being pushed through uh, Washington this infrastructure bill part of the reason these things are on the plate is that everybody can relate to obvious bridge problems and that extends to every major infrastructure that's out there. They were built 50 and 100 years ago and they're out of sight, they're out of mind and now what are we doing about it? Well, we're gonna need trillions of dollars to fix it. So some of this could have been controlled from the get-go and some of it has been, but where things are not controlled properly the remediation costs are, are high. Thank you. Uh, just a couple more questions and then we'll get everyone out of here on time. Um, can CoreTech provide technical training to engineers to understand the basics of designing to prevent corrosion? Well, we've done quite a bit of that. We'll bring pizza or sandwiches if you want. <laughs> exactly. We've done quite a bit of that. It, it, it has certainly tailed off with COVID, but we've always been available to go uh, establish that relationship or, or expand that, or the engineering firm has gotten larger and there's more people that want to see some of these basic things. Very often their projects involve a corrosion control spec section or requirement for corrosion control. And that's, that's our expertise and knowledge, that one spec section out of 50. Um, and we would understand that spec section. Yeah, we, we, Scott and I routinely speak, or are asked to speak at uh, our industry society se sections, whether it be water or power, uh, EPRI, AWWA. And, and generally, although we're talking about a project that we've done, we're really training the junior engineers as to how to recognize corrosion problems, what kind of basic understanding of how it might be addressed so that they are better prepared to prevent these things. Um, we're kind of kind of proud about the fact that we've had the opportunity and, and we'll be doing more with the uh, U.S. Coast Guard Academy's Cadet Corps. Uh, we're setting up a field corrosion study opportunity for those folks so that they can get a hands-on real life uh, corrosion design and engineering view of work that we're doing in and around the Connecticut River. So we really see ourselves as educators, both to our customers and to our employees. And that's uh, that's something we're, we're always happy to do. It's a great feature. Um, two last questions came in. So can you guys determine how long a steel structure will last underground or underwater? Yeah, most definitely. So that's through a evaluation of current condition. How long has it been there? What's the environment that it's in? And then, and then we can enhance and utilize uh, other technologies to monitor that, those corrosion rate devices, um, linear polarization or electrical resistance corrosion rate devices. They're, atmospheric, they're atmospherically located or submerged or underground. So there's, there's a whole bunch of technology we can bring to the table for, for just that. And we do that on, on large transmission mains typically in the water business because they've been in the ground for 100 years and now they cost four thousand dollars a foot to replace so is there something else we can do because they're structurally sound enough to do something else to them trenchless technologies or other rehabilitation uh, approaches yeah it's pretty it's pretty routine if you look at the the way that we get the cortec gets engaged by customers so if you have a customer that has a steel structure that's underwater or under soil or a tank, 
they'll ask us to come in and evaluate to see what condition it's in. So that's usually step one is how much corrosion has a structure already experienced. So we're establishing an historical corrosion rate, a loss of metal. Then we're then usually when in our reporting function, you know, we're telling that customer, if you did nothing, here's how long your structure is going to last before it perforates based on historical corrosion rate. Here's an option. Option two would be if you apply protective coatings and, and repair the steel you have that's gone bad, you can get another 20 years. Option three would be you can get an unlimited life of this structure if you properly cathodically protect and coat it. So, so we're able to not only look at the historical corrosion rate and, and project the life expectancy, but then project the life expectancy by applying these, these engineering principles. So it's there's always options for our customers depending on once again the criticality criticality of the of the structure and and how much money they have and whether they have short term or long term vision. So we 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 play in all those arenas. Excellent. And a last question for you guys: How can corrosion protection be verified or monitored on remote land or sea structures? That, well, if it, that you started on that one before, I think. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like you showed us a picture, right, of a box. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The thought of protection systems are monitored, and you know there are criteria and and recommended frequencies of evaluation and and monitoring to make sure the system is working right. Uh, AWWA, for example, has standards on inspecting water tanks. So is the coating system in good shape, and all the other things that are supposed to be functional functional and in good shape. So we that's the ROV. We swim and evaluate and monitor what's going on with the tank and as need be recommend that certain things get done to take care of that infrastructure. So there's a combination of tools and a combination of means and methods to monitor any of these corrosion control systems. Yeah, I think that what's what's what we were talking about with uh, remote structures is already being done. It's just applying once again new technology. Uh, you know, Scott mentioned uh, cross-country transmission main, whether it be water or gas, natural gas. They have to be monitored. People don't walk these lines every day, but they have to ensure that the corrosion protection is still effective. And we certainly have the ability to uh, attach the cathodic protection that would be needed for a marine structure offshore and then be able to interrogate that structure's sensors so that we know that it's still functioning and we know that it's being protected, which provides peace of mind and also reduces the cost of, uh, of visiting these remote structures in the future. So there's lots of ways to gather that data and make sure that you're not just hoping that you've got corrosion protection, but you've assured it through, through measurement. Wonderful. You guys have provided us with so much information. It's been really nice to learn more about what you do. Um, and I'm sure I speak for everyone who has attended and who will watch us in the future that it's been a nice deep dive into the company. Um, I've heard you say several times, reach out, talk to you guys if there's an idea because you may be able to do something that wasn't mentioned today. Um, is that a correct understanding of the message? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So um, just if you're watching this at a later date, we will have this up for all members by Friday in the access hatch for all NMC members. And then it will go up early next week on our YouTube channel to go beyond just the membership. So we do like to let the, the memberships have the first peek at it. And then um, we will follow up with a copy of the recording to all who have attended today. So if you wanted to share it with colleagues, Scott, Elizabeth, Ted, Pat, we thank you guys for coming today. We really appreciate you guys. You've been one of our most active members and it's really great to see you at each of the meetings and just hear what you're doing and congratulations on the new office and the expansion. Thank, thank you, you, Shell. Thank, thank you, you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you guys soon. I hope everyone enjoys right. about 10 minutes back in your uh, Wednesday afternoon. So stay cool. Right. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank Bye -bye. you.